Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. It's me, Zara. And thanks for coming to another Zoodles and Noodles Read Aloud. Since it's Black History Month, we will be reading an Ashanti legend called Talk Talk. Retold by Deborah M. Newton Chocolate, illustrated by Dave Albers. And since it's the folktale, we don't know who, who came up with it first, but this is retold by Oh, nice woman named Deborah. Let's begin. Talk, talk. Long ago, in Africa, a simple farmer named Jumani lived in a small village by a lazy river. Each morning, Jumani worked in his fields of millet, sunflowers, squash, and yams. Each day he planted, each day he weeded and sowed. Each day after caring for his crops, Jumani fed his animals and tended to his other chores. Jumani was such a simple man that nothing remarkable ever happened to him. There's Jumani working on all his pants. One evening, as a new moon rose behind the mountains, Jumani turned to his wife and said, tomorrow I will take our crops to the marketplace to see what I can fetch. At the first light of dawn, Jumani set off to the fields with his cow, his dog, and his favorite digging stick. Jumani had a bountiful crop. First, he dug up the millet grass, next the squash, then the sunflowers. When he finally reached his yams, the sun was hot and bright in the sky. He stopped to sip from his drinking gourd and wiped the sweat from his face. Jumani saw that it had been some time since he had weeded his yams. Uh-oh, that can't be good. They were golden brown and plump and would bring a fine price at the market. But the yams were covered with vines, which were tangled about them in dreadful knots. There's Jumani with his favorite digging stick. Let's see what Jumani does about the tangled knots. Jumani began to dig away at the vines when one of the yams spoke to him. Whoop, whoop, what have we here? It said. All season long, you never came to weed me. You did not care for me as you did your precious millet, your squash, and your sunflowers. Now here you come at harvest time with your digging stick. Get away, the yam shouted. Get away from here and leave me alone. Startled, Jumani turned to his cow. The cow chewed her cud and stared blankly at Jumani. What did you say? Jumani said to his cow. The cow continued to chew and said nothing. It wasn't cow who spoke, said dog. It was Yam, and if you don't mind, Yam says to leave him alone. Oh, his dog is talking too. So now the Yam and the dog are talking. Now at this, Jumani became very angry. Never before had he heard his dog talk. And besides that, he did not like the dog's tone of voice. So Jumani pick up his sickle, which is a which is like a knife that you use for cutting things, and, and cut a branch from a nearby palm tree to whip his dog. But then the palm tree spoke, swish, swish, put my branch down. How would you like it if somebody cut a finger off your hand? Jumani was becoming more and more upset. He started to throw the palm branch down. When the branch suddenly shouted, put me down gently. Shaken, Jumani put the branch down on a nearby stone. All at once, the stone spoke out, take that branch off me. I didn't ask for any shade. Jumani was so frightened that he started to run. On the way back to the village, Jumani met a fisherman carrying a, a trap filled with fish. 
Why are you in such a hurry? Asked the fisherman. My yam, it talked to me, answered Jumani, very short of breath. This morning I was harvesting my crop and my yam spoke to me and said, leave me alone. Then my dog said, yes, if you don't mind, why don't you leave yam alone? And when I went to whip the dog with a palm tree branch, the tree said, put that down, put that branch down. Can you imagine that? Jumani went on, his eyes wide with fear. Well, I became so frightened that I drew back my arm to throw the branch far away when suddenly the branch shouted, put me down gently. Then when I tried to lay the branch down upon a stone, the stone cried, take that branch off me. See, the stone, the yam, the dog, and the tree are all talking and Jumani's going crazy. Is that all? Asked the fisherman. He narrowed his eyes as Jumani, as though he scarcely believed the farmer's story. Is that what frightened you? Is that why you are running back to the village? Well, interrupted a fish in trap in the voice as deep as a drum. Did he, did he take the branch off the stone or not? Wah! The fisherman shouted. He wasted no time throwing the, tr the trap fish and all to the ground. Then he and Jumani began to race along the path that led to the village. See, the trap spoke. So, so the fisherman let go. Soon they were met by a weaver carrying a bundle of colorful kente cloth on his head. Kente is a type of fabric made in West Africa. See? Beautiful. My brothers, where are, where are you off to in such a rush? Asked the weaver. And on such a fine day, I might add. My yam! Jumani began explaining again, almost out of breath. This morning, as I was weeding my garden, as I was weeding my garden, my yam spoke to me. Leave me alone, it cried. Then my dog spoke. If you don't mind, why don't you leave Yam alone? With my sickle, I caught a branch from a tree to whip my dog. And the tree said, put that branch down. And when I tried to throw the branch away, the branch demanded, do it gently. Then as I was about to lay the branch down on a large stone, the stone shouted, take that branch off me. And then, added the fisherman, as farmer was telling me his story, my fish trap interrupted him and asked, well, did he take the branch off the stone or not? Jumani's eyes were bulging and sweat was pouring down the fisherman's brow. As the weaver listened, he nodded. In fact, the whole thing was so incredible that the weaver had not really believed one word of it. Perhaps these are just two wobbers trying to waylay me as I head off to the market with my kente cloth, he thought. That's nothing to get excited about, the weaver said. Then he waved the two men off with a hand. Nothing at all. Suddenly, his bundle of kente cloth spoke up. Krish, krish. Oh, yes it is. If it happened to you, you'd run too. Shouted the weaver as he threw his bundle on the path and started racing back to the village with Jumani and the fishermen. As the three men were all out of breath by the time they reached the shallow crossing the river, they found a bather who was washing himself. Where are you going? And where are you rushing in such a hurry? Asked the bather. Are you chasing a giraffe? There they are, running so fast to get to the village to tell somebody what they've done. And there's the bather, just taking a little bath in the river. Jumani began again, breathlessly. This morning, my am talked harshly to me. It said, leave me alone. 
and only because I had not weeded it for some time. My dog said, if you don't mind, why don't you leave the M alone? Then I cut a branch from a palm with my sickle to whip my dog, and a tree said, put that branch down. And when I went to throw the branch away, the branch started to do it gently, and when I tried to put the branch down on a nearby stone, the stone said, take that branch off me. <sighs> the fisherman blurted out. Then my fish trap said, well, did he take the branch off the stone or not? Then the weaver coughed out, my bundle of kente cloth also spoke. It said, you'd run too if it happened to you. Don't tell me. Don't tell me you are all running because of that, said the man taking a bath in the river. Then in a gurgling voice, the river said, well, wouldn't you run if you were in the same boat? Yo, shouted the startled bather as he leaped out of the water and all four men took off running down the path that led back to the village. There's the bather and there's the river speaking. The men ran straight into the house of the chief, a crowd of curious village villagers following close behind them. A servant came out of his house, carrying the chief's golden stool. A silence swept over the crowd as chief raised his hand to put an end to all the commotion. There's the village. They finally made it. Exhausted, oh, oh, the four men stood before him. Jumani began his story of how he had visited his fields to harvest his crops to take to the market in the city. As he began to dig up my yams, something happened, continued Jumani. Suddenly, there was all of this talk, talk. First, Yam spoke to me. It said, leave me alone. And only because I had not weeded it for in a long while. Then my yam spoke. Then my dog spoke. If you don't mind, why don't you leave yam alone? Then I used a sickle to, from a palm tree to whip my dog. The tree spoke. Put that branch down. And when I tried to throw the branch away, the branch shouted, do it gently. And when I tried to bring the branch down on a year by stone, the stone yelled, take that branch off me. The crowd was a buzz with Jumani's tail. There's everybody listening, and there's the chief. I had a trap filled with fish, added the fisherman as he addressed chief with a bow. And as farmer was telling me his story, my fish trap interrupted with, well, did he take the branch off the stone or not? Oh, great chief. My bundle of kente spoke next, exclaimed the weaver. It said, if it happened to you, you'd run too. And even the rither spoke, said the bather, trembling in his towel. See, there, there's everybody. The wise chief sat upon his golden stool and listened patiently, but he could not hide his anger. Finally, he spoke. Now all this talk talk is ridiculous, he said sternly. Get back to your chores before I punish you for stirring up trouble in the village. Get back to your work before I have you whipped. Go now. There's the chief and all his royal servants. Look at that crown, very fancy. Ashamed of their story, the four men left. Jumani went back to his fields of millet, sunflowers, squash, and yams. The chief shook his head and muttered, silly, ridiculous talk like that frightens everyone in the village. Incredible, isn't it? Said the chief stool. Just imagine, a talking yam. Now the stool is talking. And that's the end of the story. But I do have some more information. So if you'd like to leave now, that's okay. But if you'd like to learn more about where the story came from, you can stay on. Okay. Talk Talk is a legend from the Ashanti 
people of West Africa. Their homeland is the southwest part of what is now the country of Ghana. Most Ashanti believe that all animals, objects, and even places have a life of their own. The idea for the story of Talk Talk is based on this belief. The land of Ashanti is rich and fertile. Fertile means it's really good for growing crops. Besides farming crops like yams, sunflowers, millet, which is a grass grown for its seed, and squash, much of the region is forested with trees for timber, which is another word for wood. Today, the main crop is cacao, from which chocolate is made. This part of Africa is home to many animals, such as buffalo, leopards, hyenas, monkeys, and antelope live in the forest and the nearby grasslands. Crocodiles and hippos swim in the rivers, pythons hang from the trees, and cobras lurk on the ground. There are also many, many birds, such as parrots, eagles, and herons. As early as the 15th Hundreds, Portuguese explorers found the Ashanti to be a rich and powerful people. In fact, the region was so rich in gold that it came to be known as the Gold Coast. Ashanti used gold dust for money. Many important objects such as sword handles, ornaments, and jewelry were also made of gold. According to the legend, the Ashanti empire was founded when a golden stool fell from heaven into the lap of the first king, Osei Tutu. To this day, the golden stool is believed to house the spirit of the Ashanti people. Ghana is still rich in farmland and materials. There are many big cities in Ghana today, but most of the people live in small villages, like the one in Tok Tok. There's a last picture of the golden school. And that concludes our story for today. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Bye!